when Kubernetes project growth, configuring, managing, maintaining and deploying it might become a nightmare. In this video, I'm sharing the Kubernetes project structure that will ease, secure and speed up Kubernetes project management on scale. My name is Yuri Kuzamko and I help people learn software development and technology on practice. So if you're new here, make sure to click the subscribe button. Make sure you stick to the end of the video where I'm sharing the source code of the Kubernetes project structure examples. So let's start from the most simple Kubernetes project structure, which is located here. It consists basically of one deployment file, one service file and one ingress file. And this structure is using when you definitely have just one application running and you have the service to create network to it and then ingress to, to make it the outside world. Uh, this deployment structure could be easily deployed with, with the three commands and uh, yeah, it there is just a deploy sh file that can help make this deployment. So for for the projects that's simple like this, this Kubernetes project structure is indeed the optimal one. But let's consider more average deployment where we not just have the service, but we also have the database and maybe some cache service. So, and here we have a bit of a more complex infrastructure. So we have a few directories over there and, and we have the, the ingress that is um, the way we expose our service outside. Then we have a service itself that consists of the Kubernetes deployment and Kubernetes service. We also have the database that consists of the stateful set uh, and it also consists of the service and we also have the cache that consists of the stateful set and service. And uh, in order to deploy it, we have the following deploy sh file that contains a set of the, of the following kubectl commands. So in this case, this project structure is still manageable, but it's a bit more complicated because you have the configuration of all services located in different directories that you need to manage. Also, you have the, the deploy sh file. And when it comes to more complex use cases, for instance, you want to have the different configuration per different environment. So it will require you to create different configuration files like here, and it will create a bit of a mess. So it's going to be a bit more chaotic over there. Furthermore, if you want to utilize some more advanced stuff of the database or cache setup, you will need to dig a bit more in the documentation of the cache or database and figure out how you should code it in Kubernetes. So it's still it's still doable, but it, it becomes much more complicated at this stage. So now let's consider a complex deployment scenario. So let's have we have three microservices. We might have a ten of them, but this example just include three to show you. And what is basically consists of every microservice is a set of the service DB and cache. So it's pretty much the same like we have the average deployment, but now we have multiple microservices. Each of those has some kind of additional dependencies like database, cache, and those microservices might be interrelated with each other. We're also exposing them through the ingress. And now our deployment SH configuration looks like this. So we have a whole bunch of kubectl apply commands, which is um, also becoming a bit more complicated. Because let's say we want to configure the multiple environments deployments. So we will need to start modifying this deploy sh file to accept some kind of uh, parameter about which environment we are deploying to. Then we, according to this parameter, we need to change these commands. We need to create additional configuration in, inside of each service so we can have the multiple configurations but multiple environments. And it actually brings a lot of complexity over here to manage all of these. Furthermore, uh, if, we, if we have multiple different kind of open source solution we're using like databases, caches, queues, whatever, like Postgres, Redis, Kafka, whatever you want, uh, we will need to figure out how to configure it or search for some examples and maintain them. And it becomes really complicated here to manage all of this infrastructure because all of, all of your configuration, all of your uh, secrets, all of your parameters, they are split it down to every directory, to every service and it becomes very unoptimal and I would say inefficient and unsecure to doing it that way. 
So the first thing when it comes to the Kubernetes project structure that I would suggest to you would be to introduce Helm. So what is Helm? Helm is basically packages the Kubernetes deployments into the uh, Helm charts. This Helm chart is so called like the packages of Helm. So if you creating your service, you can create it as a Helm chart. And with the Helm chart, you can have the centralized configuration to this service. And whenever you create Kubernetes templates, you can reuse this configuration using the, this template syntax. I know at the first hand it might look uh, very unfriendly, but once you get used to it, 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 it brings you a big flexibility towards management your configuration here. And thus you can have multiple values files per environment and you don't need to have multiple templates per environment. Furthermore, the other biggest benefit of Helm that it allows you to reuse the, the Helm charts that are public. So for instance, if we want to add the database to our microservice. So right now on our templates, we just have the information about deployment, horizontal pod autoscaler, ingress, service and service account. But let's say we want to also add the database and cache to this service. So we don't need to create the templates by ourselves and manage them. What we do, we will just go to the Helm Hub by typing artifacthub.io. Here we have the service which contains a whole bunch of different repositories for Helm. Let's say we want to host the Postgres. So we just uh, search for the Postgres over here and I will use, um, you, can, you can find actually different kind of Postgres, different charts, you can see the reviews and everything. You just choose the PostgreSQL and uh, yeah, and then you can install this repo. I won't cover the Helm in details in this video, but if you're interested in learning more about Helm, just let me know in the comment section below so I can create another tutorial for you. And that way we can just go to our chart configuration and add the, our PostgreSQL here like this. The same thing we can do with Redis. So no need to manage the deployment configuration of ready open source solution. You're just installing the chart over here and then in your values you can adjust the PostgreSQL uh, specific configuration the way you want. So and it actually simplifies our deployment uh, because let's say yeah we, we have the now three commands to deploy our microservices using Helm we can specify here different values files depending on the environment. So we can still tweak some kind of a bash and yeah, and it will bring us a bit more flexibility here. Furthermore, we can go ahead and install any kind of public repos directly to our Kubernetes deployment. And here I've created the Nginx values file. Let's say I want to install the Nginx load balancer controller. So this is the configuration for it. and and this is the example how I'm installing it. And Helm really eases our life in terms of that we can reuse publicly hosted Kubernetes deployments chart and we can also have more flexibility in configuring our projects. But still, when our projects go really, really big and let's say we have like 10 to 20 microservices and handling all this deployment with the bash script like we done here become a nightmare. You will have this bash script hell that is really almost unmaintainable and really big chance of human mistake in your bash scripts to make deployments. So that's why I would say bash scripts are not a reliable way to store the deployments of your complex Kubernetes infrastructure. And for that reason, I would like to introduce you to my, I would say, final project uh, infrastructure that it uses Helm file. So what is Helm file? Helm file, it's another project that is, let's create the abstraction configuration on top of the Helm. So instead of having these deploy SA script we used to have before and specifying Helm grade, Helm install commands, all of that, we do this in the Helm file. We, in the Helm file, we can just specify all the repositories we want to use and then we can create all of the releases. And then we specify the name of, of the release, we specify the patch to our Helm chart. This could be either our custom Helm charms like we have here, microservice, or we can, we can even install public Helm charts like Nginx and specify the config order. Uh, the benefit from it that we can 
specify config to each service uh, directly into this Helm file, like this. You see here on the values, and then we specify the config. Uh, the other benefit is that we can easily include a whole bunch of different other Helm jars like Prometheus, Coopstack, uh, Loki, and we, we can set up it the way we want. Of course, if our uh, configurations become really huge, like we have here, we, we might want to create a different file and let's say we, we're gonna create here the uh, Prometheus YAML file that will, that will contain the configuration of our Prometheus so instead of storing all of the values like this we can just specify reference to our file like, and we don't need to store all of these so we can have this configuration stored over here but still uh, the other benefit of this uh, Helm file is that all of our configuration can be centralized. So I've created a secrets directory over here and we have a different configuration files per environment like the development environment and the production environment. And here are some examples of some key value YAML configuration with YAML objects, whatever. And then if we, if we go to our Helm file, we can see how we're using this configuration. So we we basically specifying the end values to our microservices. We can create the end object that might have some default config, right? And then this one that we specified here will extend it. So we might want to have some configuration parameters like we have here set by default, all of these. And then if you want to modify them, we can modify them in the Helm file so we can specify the configuration parameters per environment. So thus we can encrypt those files and we can have flexible configurations per environment. And now our our Kubernetes deployment infrastructure sits in one, in one file. So whenever we modify something, we can have it really clear. And thus there is no probability of human mistake in this complex bash hell script, right? And also we, we have flexible multi-environment deployment infrastructure that allows us to modify Helm charts configuration through the centralized configuration files or the centralized solution. And we, we utilizing Helm here that helps us to provide a flexible template configuration for our Kubernetes deployments and also we can reuse existing Helm charts to have the proper de Kubernetes deployment of some of our open source solutions we're using like Postgres. So this is the most efficient Kubernetes deployment configuration when it comes to big Kubernetes project on scale. And as I promised at the beginning of this video, you can access all of these examples I'm shared with you from my GitHub repository going by this URL. I'll share this link in the video description below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, let me know in the comments section below what are your current biggest challenges with the Kubernetes. I'll be releasing new Kubernetes videos soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel to not miss any of these. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in one of my next videos. Bye.